Okay. All right, you can see all that. So what we're going to do today is learn how to see what moon phase is visible from Earth. So I was talking about it a little bit yesterday on our Google Meet, but if you missed it, or if you're going to meet, miss today's, that's okay, because I'm going to have my YouTube debut today with this video. As you can see, and maybe you can't, I'm using cans to keep my camera up, which is kind of fun. Uh, so now I have a document camera. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the moon's orbit straight through. So we're basically complete, completing this circle. Does everybody see that? So, of course, the moon's orbit is slightly elliptical, like the Earth's. And this doesn't really show that. Okay. And the moon also revolves counterclockwise around the Earth. So again, what I'm doing is I'm just connecting the orbit straight through to complete the circle. Okay, everybody see that? Okay, so I'm pretending I'm a, an observer and I'm standing here on Earth at about 42 degrees latitude or 41 degrees latitude, which is New York. Okay, Long Island is about 41. Okay, so here's me and I'm pretending I'm looking at the moon. This is the northern hemisphere. If you remember from our last unit, if this is the North Pole, this date would be one of the equinoxes because the North Pole is split in half by night and day. Okay, so here's me in the daytime looking at the moon at night. And um, I guess, you know, the moon uh, comes out sometimes in the night and sometimes during the day. You know that from your Ed Puzzle yesterday. Okay, so the only thing that's visible is the lit portion between the observer and the line of the orbit, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight that lit portion. I have my handy dandy teal marker, and I'm gonna highlight just the lit portion that's visible between the observer and that line of orbit. Because anything that's beyond that line of orbit is not visible to the observer. Good? Okay. At this point, that whole half is visible. Notice this is the point where the moon is opposite the sun. Okay, we call that opposition. Okay, and at this point, most of the moon is visible. Okay, at this point, half of the lit portion is visible. Sorry, I'm trying to show you. I'm coloring out of the lines, that's okay. From me to the observer, I mean from the observer to the moon, a tiny bit of the moon is visible. And if I'm over here, none of the moon is visible. We call that the new moon. You might notice that that's on the same side as the sun. We call that conjunction. I'm gonna call that the new moon. And I'm gonna go ahead and shade that all because you can't see that, the new moon, okay? Another reason you can't see the new moon is because it rises and sets with the sun. Okay, so I'm gonna go around the orbit. Now, if I'm, the, if I'm the observer and I'm looking this way and I turn my paper from here to here, notice that it's the right side that's lit and it's just a tiny bit of the moon. When my kids were little, they called that the toenail moon, but we're going to call it the crescent moon. Okay, when the right side is lit, we call that a waxing crescent. Okay, the waxing, the word waxing means it's getting bigger on the right hand side. So if you watch, 
the moon seems to be growing on the right hand side. So again, from here, and I'm looking here, turn my paper around, I notice that's the right hand side. So I have the right half lit, so I'm not gonna color the right half because that's lit. I'm gonna shade in the left half so that it shows the right half lit. And we call that first quarter. We were talking about it yesterday in our meet. This is a quarter of the way through the orbit and it's actually a quarter of the lit portion that we see in that phase. Okay, that's why it's called the quarter. Okay, again, if I'm the observer and I'm looking at this moon, I turn my paper and I can see the right hand side lit and it's most of the moon. So what I'm gonna do is shade just that little tiny side here. And that swollen egg shape is called the waxing gibbous. The word swollen, uh, waxing, uh, sorry, the word gibbous means swollen, okay? So here we go. We have the waxing gibbous. And then over here, we have the full moon opposite the sun. So we're not gonna shade it because that's exactly what we see, a full white circle. So that's the full moon. And again, notice it's opposite the sun, okay? So again, these are your waxing phases because waxing means getting bigger on the right-hand side. Add that to your notes, okay? Now as we go around the rest of the orbit, the moon seems to be shrinking, okay? From, and the left side is lit. So if we look over here, from here to here, notice it's the left side that's lit, right? Remember that? Left side that's lit, from here to here, and that would be just the gibbous side. That's wrong. I like <laughs> it's the left side that's lit. There we go. Left lit. And that is the waning gibbous. Okay, waning gibbous. Sorry. Okay, from here to here, I notice the left half is lit. So I'm going to draw, leave the left hand side white, shade the right hand side. And this is called last quarter. Okay, from here to here, just a little tiny bit is lit on the left hand side. So I'm going to fill that and leave the left lit. Okay, good. Waning, left, and the moon is shrinking. Okay, the left side is lit and the moon is shrinking. Okay, so here's your moon phase diagram. A couple things to remember. This is where you have your neap tides in your neap tides, you have your high tide and low tide are almost even because the moon and the sun are pulling on the earth's water, okay? And on the spring tides, they happen at the new moon and at the full moon, that's when the earth and the sun and the moon are in one line, so they're both pulling on earth's water. So the high tides are much higher and the low tides are much lower. So the bigger range between the tides. Good? All right, there's your moon phase diagram. Ta-da! Enjoy.